GMA passengers are still stranded across the country, part of that Southwest travel debacle. The demand for compensation and answers growing. We put the tough questions to the Southwest Airlines CEO Bob Jordan in his first TV interview this morning. And with less than 24 hours left in 2022, how to start the new year right from your wallet to your kitchen and what to binge this New Year's Eve weekend. It's all coming up right here on GMA. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA, a group of armed robbers still on the run after a bold robbery of an armored truck here in our area. What police say they got away with. Plus, the Spurs back in the win column despite a huge challenge from the New York Knicks. We have highlights and we'll hear from some of the players. And checking on the, some of the cars are on the roads this morning at I-37 in Houston Street. We've made it to Friday, the last Friday before the new year. You're watching GMSA. We'll be right back. Washington Huskies. Plus, a shooting on the far west side turns deadly. What police are saying about the man who survived in a search for suspects. Ready to wrap up the year? Outside with live cam. We're down to 55 degrees. Mike has your New Year's weekend forecast. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, December 30th. Happy Friday, everybody out there getting ready for the new year and good news as far as outdoor activities looks pretty good. It's going to be a great weekend, even better. It's being delivered by Mike Ostrage, who is back oh, from you. holiday great. break. I, I was just going to, do you need to dry your tears after that? <laughs> after a long <laughs> run, you uh, lost last night. A lot night. of that, yes, yes. <laughs> so, that She'll be great. okay. That was not a, a pretty game, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a fantastic weekend. We've got warm temperatures. I mean, it's going to be well above normal this weekend. Plenty of sunshine. But we have to get through today, first of all. So if you are heading out to uh, work this morning, you may run into a couple little sprinkles out there. We've got some light rain showing up on radar as of right now. And Randolph, which you can see there's nothing on radar, but Randolph is reporting a little bit of drizzle. And there may be some drizzle that's too light to be picked up on radar. But here's this little batch of rain. Right Right here coming into the uh, southwest side of Bear County just on 90 and 35. So if you're heading down there and then well, there were a couple of sprinkles right there around Elmendorf and then head on out here in toward the hill country going out 10 Bernie. You had a few of these little sprinkles heading off into portions of Kendall County and then further out in toward comfort. So 10 may be on the damp side and then more rain further on out to the west. And this is where the majority of the rain is going to be later on today. But we will have a couple of these little sprinkles sort of scattered about the area, primarily west of 35 more rain the further west you go. Mountain Cedars on the moderate side. Mold is light. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out later on this morning. And as far as temperatures may drop down a few more degrees here and there. We've actually gone up a couple of notches from earlier this morning. We will have those cloudy skies and a couple of sprinkles around here and then a little bit of sunshine. This will be later on this afternoon. By noon, we're going to make it up to 67. There will be a few uh, little sprinkly showers around, especially off to the west throughout the morning hours and then going in through through the afternoon. We'll still have a couple of those showers out there. 70 for high temperature later on today. Again, the majority of the rain is going to be further on out to the west. Then things clear on out tonight and that sets us up for that beautiful, beautiful weekend. 22 goes out on the warm side as that's the way 23 comes on in here. Very warm, but plenty of sunshine. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, you seen any little damn spots on the roads? On I haven't all? just yet. You know, we have okay. about 20 cameras over here, Mike. Uh, all right now, the roads look pretty dry, at least for now here in town. Things don't look too bad. 35 at New Braunfels, but I'll be keeping a close eye on things. You can see really it's just a, maybe a few more folks out there. 6 a.m. is really that hour where a lot more people tend to wake up and get their morning started early with us. So just remember to drive safe. Good news is we won't really spot a lot of congestion today just because it is still a holiday for a lot of folks, but we do know some of you have to head to work. So just take a look right now. The map has uh, given us a lot of green these last few days, and we're thankful for that because that means the roads are quiet right now. It's perfect opportunity to take advantage of them. All right, if you are taking a look at these travel times, maybe your thoughts are maybe you're part of me. Maybe your travels are going to take you right here into the Alamo City. You're still in the green. The trend continues there. I 10 westbound right now from Seguin looks like 29 minutes, uh, but of course 33 minutes usual drive time. 87 northbound from our friends down Lavernia and right. Our friends in Floresville can expect 28 minutes if they plan to head to the Alamo City. So again, back here on Trans Guide, the roads have been quiet all week long, but we hope it will last into the new year. But but we'll continue to watch the roads closely right here on GMSA and give you those updates as they come about, guys. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, a woman is dead. Another person hurt after a shooting on the city's west side. San Antonio police found the pair at a hospital.
And Camelia Juarez joins us live right now. Camelia, what have you learned so far? Mark, Stephanie, San Antonio police found a woman dead at a Baptist neighborhood hospital off of what, uh, near Westover Hills off of 151 around 1 this morning. But police say the shooting actually happened near North General McMullen. San Antonio police say the shooting happened somewhere between Blue Ridge Drive and Riva Street on the city's west side. The man and woman were inside a car when another car pulled up next to them and began shooting on the road. After the shooting, the pair went to the Baptist Neighborhood Hospital where the woman died from her injuries. The man was taken to Bamsey, but he is expected to be okay. Police are investigating this fatal shooting and the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office is working to identify that woman. Reporting live from downtown, Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Camelia. To a developing story we've been tracking this morning, Bear County Sheriff's deputies say a man was hit by a car and left in the middle of the road on Thursday night. So this happened after 11.30 p.m. on the far southwest side along Lucky Road, which is between San Antonio and Lytle. BCSO deputies believe the man in his 20s was dragged by the vehicle who hit him. Now, there were no witnesses to that crash. The man was taken to University Hospital and currently is in critical condition. San Antonio police say a woman has possibly life-threatening injuries this morning after she was run over last night. Happened around 9.30 in the 1800 block of Vance Jackson, just north of I-10 on the northwest side. Police say the homeless woman was walking in the street and was hit by someone driving a pickup truck. The woman was taken to a hospital soon after. Right now, the driver of the truck is not facing charges. A suspect wanted in connection to the shooting death of a man in front of his own daughter has been arrested. 20-year-old Joe Longoria is charged with murder. Police say Longoria shot a 49-year-old man after an argument on December 15th. This happened in the 500, excuse me, in the 400 block of Lebanon Street. That is on the city's southeast side. Now, family members identify the victim as Ines Caroga. His daughter Joanne says she saw it happen as they were leaving their home. She says her father had honked at two vehicles blocking both sides of the street. Now, one of the car, the driver of that car drove off. Joanne says her father was shot after he got out of his truck to confront the other driver. Kiyota died at the scene. A driver accused of street racing now faces multiple charges. 33-year-old John Filan is facing multiple felony charges. Those include injury to a child causing serious bodily injury and two counts of racing on a highway with serious bodily injury. Deputies say he lost control of his Pontiac GTO while racing another car along Highway 90 near Highway 211. Investigators say he hit a third car. A mother and her 10-year-old child inside the car were taken to University Hospital. Deputies are still trying to identify the woman inside Filan's car who was also hurt. They're also looking for the driver accused of racing with Filan. If you have any information about the driver of a white Volkswagen GTI with a black stripe, if you saw the race, you're asked to call the Bear County Sheriff's Office. A group of armed robbers are still on the loose after targeting an armored truck and getting away with a, quote, substantial amount of money. Thursday's incident is at least the third armored truck robbery in this year. Now, Converse police were called to the auto zone on FM 78. Police say at least four people hijacked a truck while the guard was inside that store. They made the driver stop less than a mile away, and two more armored truck robberies were reported just off of FM 78 on this side of San Antonio. So uh, one was in August, the other just two weeks ago. Converse police say it is possible the robbery crew has experienced committing these types of crimes. I'd be speculating if I believe that these per, these people are or the suspects, if you would, have had any 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 prior uh, you know involvement in crimes such as this one. Police say the robbers hit the armored truck driver with a gun, and he was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. So far, police say it is too early to tell if the three incidents are related. A 62-year-old woman is in need of a doctor's care, and she hasn't been seen for two days. San Antonio police say Teresa Maria Jimenez was last seen in the 7300 block of Barlight Boulevard off of Southwest Military Drive. Officers say she has a medical condition. She was wearing black leggings, white shoes, and a red sweater or sweatshirt with a snowman on the front. You see right there in that picture, she was also carrying a black purse. She's about 5'3", 135 pounds with brown eyes and waist length, straight brown hair. If you've seen her or know where she is, please contact the SAPD Missing Persons Unit 207-7660.
time now, 6.09 and 55 degrees for now. Still to come on GMSA, something we all get but can't avoid. We're talking robocalls, and now Google says they've got an app to warn you if you get one. And the Spurs win again, this time with some unexpected help from an unlikely player. We're going to have the highlights and reaction from Coach Pop. And what a way to end the year with beautiful weather this weekend. How warm will it get each and every day? Mike Ostray just standing by with your New Year's weekend forecast. 613, welcome back. A busy sports night in Alamo City. Had the Spurs hosting the Knicks at the AT&T Center. Devin Vassell did not play to do knee soreness. It was Star Wars night for Spurs fans. Silver and Black used the force to get an early lead. Into the first, Josh Richardson for the buzzer beater. Three ball, and Spurs led 38-29 after Warren. Spurs led by as many as 14 points in the second quarter and held the lead at halftime. Third quarter, Trey Jones passes to Sohan for the uh, throw down uh, the baseline slam dunk Spurs by 11 later Stanley Johnson grabs the rebound and then throws the ball to Langford for a layup and Keldon Johnson makes a high arching three Spurs lead after three fourth quarter Knicks trying to save the ball going out of bounds but Romeo Langford gets the pass instead lays it right in Langford scores a career high 23 points Spurs win over the Knicks 122 to 115. I guess we just won them all around games I was just Letting the game come to me and just just playing playing basketball, honestly. It was nothing uh, out the ordinary. He's done everything from start to not play a minute in other games. He just always seems to be ready no matter what we need. So with Devin out, uh, he did a hell of a job. So looking ahead, Spurs host Luka Doncic and the Mavericks tomorrow night at 6 o'clock on New Year's Eve. Rough night for Stephanie's Texas Longhorns at the Valero Alamo Bowl, taking on the Washington Huskies in the Dome last night. Texas scored 10 points late, pulling within seven on Burt Auburn's 26-yard field goal with 140 remaining. Then failed an onside kick try. Horns stopped the Huskies on the ensuing possession and took over on their own 16 with 32 seconds to go. Got Washington on to, to Washington 40 on the final play of the game. Huskies quarterback Michael Penix Jr. threw for 287 yards and two touchdowns that helped Washington hold off Texas 27-20. Texas was in out. Star running back Bijan Robinson because of the draft, so Texas rushed for just 51 measly yards. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Prescott with plenty of time. Fires. Touchdown. Caught. Leaping grab by Dalton Schultz. Big win for the uh, Cowboys last night on Thursday Night Football. Dak Prescott threw for 282 yards, two touchdowns to Dalton Schultz as the Cowboys beat Tennessee 27-13 for their sixth win in seven games. Uh, Dak did have three interceptions. Cowboys posted their first back-to-back 12-win -back season since 1994-95 when Dallas won the last of their five Super Bowl titles. Cowboys still need to finish the regular season at Washington next week with Philadelphia losing out for a chance at a second straight NFC East title. Otherwise, they will be locked into the number five seed in the NFC playoffs. Yeah, tough night for the Horns. Just saying. <laughs> Time now, 616, and I saw flashing lights over there at I-35. Yep, uh, flashing lights. You can see there, 35 at FM 1103. Just checked uh, with our friends at TxDOT. This does look like a stall vehicle actually in the southbound lane. So if you are traveling in those southbound lanes from 35, you will see that stall vehicle. So make sure to move over or slow down. Notice it's uh, very dark out there, and both the north and southbound lanes are pretty busy with traffic right now. So let's make sure we get first responders and that driver plenty of room to get the issue resolved. It's out toward the northeast side, so again, just watch out if you're traveling, maybe from uh, shirts or New Braunfels. But we'd get you to the map, and this again has really been the story of the week. Just quiet roadways. Take advantage of them if you can. If you're looking for tranquility, the roads may be the best place to do it. But uh, be on the lookout, of course, aside from that stall vehicle. We know that construction will continue, and of course, Texas crews have been busy all throughout 2022, and they're going to be busy into 2023. Let's take a look at FM 2252 Nacogdoches Road, where we see bridge work that will take place. It begins on Thursday, January 5th uh, should wrap pretty quickly on Friday, January 6th, at least a portion of it. It does begin at nine in the evening to five in the morning is when it should wrap up. 
full closure of lanes in both directions right there at the Evans Road intersection. But again, if you want to stay updated with all things traffic related, head over to our case at traffic page, scan that QR code that will take you directly there. We do know a lot of folks are visiting from out of town, so you know what areas to avoid. But of course, we'll keep you updated throughout the morning. Uh, of course, uh, also just watch out for that stall vehicle. Make sure you check your vehicle if you have any big road travel plans. Thank you, Stephen. Quick Thank clarification. Uh, DAC had three turnovers, two interceptions, one fumble last night. Okay. And it's kind of confusing when you say either the NFC East champion or number five seed, but it's the division winners that are first four seeds, so they would be bumped down. So go Lions, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Good luck, Bears, buddy. Yeah. You guys were looking great yeah. this year and now are kind of flaming out at the end. Because they, they should have beaten, mm -hmm. uh, was it Carolina that they played? And then they play Bears and Packers, which it's, they've beaten both of them. The Bears thing, Packers are, you know. Right. It's been crazy. Yeah. A lot of this won't be decided till the final week, week yeah. 18, and we're in week 17 now. I always love when you read, okay, if so-and-so wins on the second Tuesday yes. by 37 points, <laughs> right. then. If you look at the North so Star with the West <laughs> Wind going this way. Yeah. So anyway, uh, take a look at this picture. And this is what a lot of people, I think, are thinking as of right now come Monday or Tuesday. Aw. <laughs> I don't want to go back to work. <laughs> right. No, they Look don't at really that guy. Want to head back to work. But, yep, got to head back, uh, back to school on Tuesday as well. Thank you very much for the case at Connect Picture. I love that. You just want to take that blanket and throw it back over your head. It is not overly cold this morning. It is a little bit damp out there. And... Uh, it still looks like 410 is dry out there by the airport. We do have a couple of light sprinkles that are showing up around the area. There is the majority of the rain out there to the west of us, but we do have again a few of these showers that are starting to work their way onto the, the west side of town. Very few and far between. There has been a little bit of drizzle being reported at Randolph. So even what is too light to show up on radar, you've got that again, a little bit of drizzle out there by Rand Randolph and then out there in the parts of the hill country. First of all, zooming in a little bit here. This is working its way up 35 as well as 90 and then heading up uh, 10 into the hill country. We've seen a couple of the little sprinkles that have moved through Bernie and then a few more on our are now starting to develop there in eastern Bandera County, moving in toward Kendall County right around Comfort as well. So couple light showers hanging around here this morning, which is what this computer model is indicating. The majority of rain again out there to the west, and that's what it's going to be throughout the rest of today. I think this kind of broad brushes things a little bit more than what we're actually going to be seeing. It'll just be very, very light stuff out there at best. A couple of decent downpours out in western parts of the hill country throughout the rest of the afternoon and those few showers here and there. So again, not going to be raining constantly, but just to have an umbrella and have a light little rain jacket if you're out running a couple of errands today or you do have to go into work and then we'll have some more of those showers around late this afternoon. Then things are going to start to clear out by this evening and that's when we have uh, the start for a beautiful day around here tomorrow. The weekend's going to be absolutely fantastic. Dew point temperatures, the humidity is going to stay low throughout the first part of the weekend. It's going to try and come back in here by Sunday, Monday. If front moves through, it's not going to be a big, strong blast of cold air. Uh, we are going to be seeing the humidity drop down somewhat, but we'll still be on the mild side even going into the first half of the week. But then we get some cooler air coming on in here with another front that moves through by Thursday, and that's going to put us back down to just basically about normal readings by the end of next week. But the year is definitely going to start off on the warm side, and this year is going to end up on the warm side. 67 at noon today, a couple of showers out there, one or two of them. The majority of anything is going to be further on out to the west. 70 for a high temperature today. Again, a few showers. We clear out later on tonight. The weekend looks spectacular, albeit very warm. We'll still be anywhere from... Again, 10, 15 degrees above normal. Uh, some folks going to be getting into the uh, low 80s by Sunday and Monday. We'll have a chance of rain Monday, even a thunderstorm or two. And then finally, we'll cool back down to normal readings by the end of next week. Looks good. Mm -hmm. No complaints for me. Not a bad looking weekend, especially compared to last weekend. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Mike. 621, 55 degrees. And coming up before 630, Marvel's honoring comics legend Stan Lee with their latest project. We're going to have a preview just ahead. Want more from your vitamins? Get more with Nature's Bounty. From the first ever triple action sleep supplement to daily digestive support to more wellness solutions every day. Get more with Nature's Bounty. Want luxury hair repair that doesn't cost $50? 
Pantene's Pro Vitamin Formula repairs hair, as well as the leading luxury bonding treatment for softness and resilience without the price tag. If you know, you know it's Pantene. My asthma felt anything but normal. It was time for a new normal with Nucala. Nucala is a once monthly add on treatment for severe eosinophilic asthma that can mean less oral steroids, not for sudden breathing problems. Allergic reactions can occur. Get help right away for swelling of face, mouth, tongue, or trouble breathing. Infections that can cause shingles have occurred. Don't stop steroids unless told by your doctor. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. May cause headache, injection site reactions, back pain, and fatigue. Ask your asthma specialist about a new normal with Nucala. In your morning consumer headlines, Google Voice is sounding the alarm on spam and robocalls. The internet service will now warn you when a potential spam call is coming in, just like the feature we see with traditional cell phone services. If a user confirms that a call is spam, future calls from that number go straight to voicemail. And Disney is honoring the Marvel Comics legend Stan Lee with their newest project. Disney Plus will release an original documentary about Lee's life. The announcement came on what would have been Lee's 100th birthday. He died back in 2018 at the age of 95. The iconic comic book writer co-created some of Marvel's most popular characters, including Spider-Man, The Avengers, and X-Men. Lee went on to appear in the comics himself and make cameos in Marvel movies. Lots of cameos. Yeah. 626, 55 degrees on your Friday. Up next at 630, Uvalde's only pediatrician is pulling double duty as a doctor and advocate for gun law changes, what he's hoping to accomplish in 2023. Clock is ticking on a free program that can help people get their criminal records erased, what the program is and who is eligible to sign up. I'm ABC's Justin Finch. Southwest Airlines planning to reboot its full flight operation starting today after days of cancellations and customer inconveniences. Coming up, what the U.S. Transportation Department is telling travelers and Southwest Airlines this morning. Also this morning on GMSA, a look at what's next for San Antonio Councilman Clayton Perry after new documents reveal how much he was drinking during the crash. And outside with live cam last Friday of the year. So we've got some morning clouds down to about 55 degrees, so a bit on the cool side, but it's going to be a beautiful weekend. Happy Friday. Yes. And can we say Happy New Year now? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got the team all together here for our last 630 broadcast of 2022. Wow. Aww. Yeah. It's been a good year. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic uh, this weekend. If you are heading on, obviously, be careful if you are driving, mm -hmm. designated driver and all that. But, uh, yeah, no weather problems at all. Today, a little bit different situation, though. Yes, so have you seen anything yet? On Not yet. Cameras? Not yet. Okay. Crossed, uh, this picture, though. as you can see, it's kind of a little bit murky looking out there as of right now. We've got a few light little sprinkles that are showing up on radar. I'll show you that in just a second. 54 degrees. We are anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees above normal. Should be at 41 right now. Dew points at 43. So this has actually dropped down from yesterday's reading where it was really humid in the morning. Here's the few light sprinkles that we have around the area right now and pretty much on the uh, well, what's being picked up on radar on the, the west side of town, although out here around Randolph, there is a little bit of drizzle still being reported out there. So some of this may be too light to be picked up on radar. So could have some damp roads out there on the, the west side of town. Then you go up into parts of the hill country. We've had a few showers moving across 10 between, uh, say, Bernie and Comfort and then also up around Blanco. Again, just a couple of very, very light showers. Bit more rain, especially over there in northern Mexico. That's going to continue to be in the kind of the western part of our viewing area out in the hill country throughout the rest of today. Rock Springs Junction have had a little bit of rain, and you'll see the majority of the rain later on today, albeit on the light side. A couple of heavier pockets here and there. Mountain Cedars moderate. Mole is on the low side. Update account is going to come out in about an hour or so. So a couple of showers primarily to the west. But again, we've got those few sprinkles here in town, and it is on the mild side. Mostly cloudy, very warm, a few showers around the area, mainly to the west. That's going to be the situation in through dinner time. Then we're going to start to clear on out. That sets the stage for a beautiful New Year's weekend. Sunny and very warm, mid and upper 70s around here. We're going to start off the year 
on the warm side that will continue into Monday with a couple of showers and stays warm through the middle part of the week. Then we do have another front moving on through here. Nothing like last week, but it will at least knock temperatures back down to normal readings. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, any problems, sir? Well, we do have spotted at least one problem here, Mike. I-35 at FM 1103. Let's get a closer look from Transguide. I was actually speaking to our friends over there on the phone just a few minutes ago. It actually looks like a spill that's been reported. Initially, TxDOT reported this as a stall vehicle, but you see a few more flashing lights out there, and that's because first responders are working to get this situation cleared up. Now, north and southbound lanes are typically pretty busy at all hours on I-35, but especially during this hour, we tend to see more folks wake up and travel through that corridor. I-35 southbound at FM 2252, that exit is actually closed again as they're working to clear the spill up or clean this spill up. Uh, it doesn't look to be too major, at least at this point, because we're not detecting any major congestion, but give it a few minutes, that could probably change. Change. Giving you now a wide look at the metropolitan area. This has been our story and this is actually really good news because the roads here in town are quiet, but we are going to be keeping a close eye for any of those damp spots that Mike mentioned a little bit earlier. Uh, but I would say right now you pretty much are in the clear. If you do have to travel along I-35 at FM 1103, this is a shot. Keep in mind, FM 2252 is closed right now as they're working to get this spill cleaned up. We'll keep a close eye on it and hopefully in the next few minutes we'll have a better update. Mark stuff. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, an argument on the west side leads to a shooting, and San Antonio police believe they've got the suspect in custody. Happened in the 400 block of Amaya Road around 2.45 this morning. SAPD says the argument between the four people ended with a woman being shot. She was first driven to a fire station before she was taken to University Hospital. She is expected to be okay. Police have detained three people, including the suspected shooter. 14 drinks in four hours. Newly released police documents reveal how much San Antonio Councilman Clayton Perry is accused of drinking on the night of his suspected DWI incident. Now, Perry was booked this week on DWI for a crash he's accused of being involved in back on November 6. We are told someone followed Perry after the crash and that the San Antonio Police Department eventually caught up with him and an officer's body cam shows him slurring his words. If convicted, Perry faces up to six months in jail and a fine of $3,000. Looking ahead, hundreds of people in Bear County may be eligible to have their criminal records wiped clean. The San Antonio NAACP branch is now offering free expungement services. The group partnering with the Texas Legal Services Center out of Austin. For eligibility, you cannot be convicted, but there are certain circumstances for misdemeanors where well, you could still be eligible, you must also make an income that's below the federal poverty line. There are some ways that people can qualify if they have medical needs um, or housing needs where their income can be adjusted for eligibility. Advocates are asking people to apply now because the grant supporting the program expires February 1st. To apply in person, visit the Barbara Jordan Community Center in San Antonio at 2803 East Commerce between 9 and 5 Monday through Friday. For more information on eligibility requirements and how to apply online, visit our website at ksat.com. Over in Uvalde, the town's only pediatrician is pulling double duty, one as a doctor and the other as an advocate for changes to gun laws. On May 24th, Dr. Roy Gadetto responded to Uvalde Memorial Hospital to help with patients taken there. Weeks later, he testified in front of Congress and has been back to our nation's capital several times since. Most recently, two weeks ago, Gadetto tells us that his duty is fighting for, to change gun laws to honor his Hippocratic oath to save children. The part of my job, and, and, and I think it's part of your job as a physician too, no matter who you are and where you are, uh, to step up and protect your patients. Right now, H.R. 1808, known as the Assault Weapons Ban of 2022, has passed in the House. In the Senate, the bill was read twice and then referred to a committee. Topping your morning headlines, Southwest Airlines is planning to resume normal operations today after days of system-wide cancellations and delays. This morning at San Antonio International Airport, only five flights are canceled for Southwest compared to dozens over the past few days. ABC's Justin Finch has a closer look at Southwest next steps. Starting today, Southwest Airlines aims to end the travel nightmare impacting customers nationwide. My personal apology is the first step of making things right. The air carrier releasing a statement saying, we are encouraged by the progress we've made to realign crew, their schedules, and our fleet. 
Southwest has canceled more than 15,000 flights since last week, likely impacting more than a million travelers in what's being called one of the worst airline meltdowns in U.S. history. I've never seen anything like this. This is absolutely crazy. Many stranded Southwest customers have spent days without their luggage, forced to cover unforeseen expenses out of pocket. Southwest is urging impacted travelers to submit receipts on its website, saying it will honor reasonable requests for reimbursement for meals, hotel, and alternate transportation from those whose flights were canceled or significantly delayed between December 24th and January 2nd. The airline also pledging to reimburse customers unused tickets during that same window. The U.S. Department of Transportation already investigating Southwest, also vowing to hold the carrier accountable for those reimbursements. I'm assigning U.S. DOT resources to follow through on every complaint that comes in to make sure that you get compensated. But travelers should be prepared to wait. Southwest says that compensation process could take weeks, as could the timeline for them to ship lost luggage back to passengers. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. And looking ahead, Mega Millions lottery buyers are hoping to end the year with a bang. Tonight's drawing is for a jackpot of over $600 million. There were no lucky winners matching all six numbers in Tuesday night's drawing. Tickets sold in California and Florida for an October 14th drawing shared the last Mega Millions jackpot of $502 million. Now, the record Mega Millions jackpot is more than $1.5 billion, one in 2018, and a jackpot surpassing $1.3 billion was one in Illinois back in July. Uh, that's the big one I remember yes. from this year. All right, 639, 55 degrees. Up next, when your New Year's Eve headache drops like the big city ball, you're gonna be desperate for some relief. We're gonna look at some popular recipes for a hangover cure. Time check 642 this morning, New Year's Eve, just about here. It's the last hurrah of 2022, and many celebrate with a glass or two of champagne. But what happens if those two glasses turn into four or five? Nancy Alvarez looks into so-called hangover remedies and reports on what works and what doesn't. At the end of the evening, I was hugging that big white bowl. <laughs> the next morning, we just did not remember anything, so it was bad. I was throwing up the whole next day. It's likely you have your own hangover story. The most hungover day of the year is, you guessed it, New Year's Day. But what do you do to ease your pain? I try to sweat it out, like go work out. The latest trend on TikTok has us all freezing just thinking about it. Oh, that's so unpleasant. Dunking your face in a bowl of ice water. A pharmacist out of Texas claims by keeping your face submerged for 15 seconds, it turns on part of your brain that's responsible for digestion. There's no scientific proof it works. Another myth that having a drink the morning after will help. Experts say having a drink the next day will actually prolong your pain. So what does science say you should do? First up, drink water. Dehydration contributes to increased thirst, fatigue, headaches, and dizziness. Eat a good breakfast. It helps to maintain steady blood sugar levels. And science shows low blood sugar can worsen nausea, fatigue, and weakness. New research also shows in small studies, red ginseng reduced blood alcohol levels and hangover severity. Prickly pear extract halved the risk of experiencing severe symptoms, and ginger may protect against alcohol-induced liver damage. Just a few reminders that may help you if your head is still ringing the morning after. I'm Nancy Alvarez reporting. Okay, 644. Let's go ahead and check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Hello. Yeah, we still have these problems here along I-35 at FM 1103. Was hoping for a better update, but uh, really first responders sometimes need the time to get this. Uh, these types of situations cleared up. We're looking at a spill along I-35 South, and I notice that we do have at least two first responders out there on the scene already working to clear this mess up. Uh, it doesn't really appear that it's causing so much of a delay with traffic in the southbound lanes of I-35, but keep in mind, FM 2252 still is closed off at this time. Notice also those north and southbound lanes were uh, 
uh, just appearing to be a little bit busier. Giving you a wide look at the map again, this is how we expected to end the show with some of the green that we're seeing on the screen out there. But we know that people are going to be traveling today, so let's get one last look at those gas prices reported by AAA. Now, a few of these actually went up uh, actually a few cents. 274 right now in Bear County is the average gas price. Around the state, we're looking at $2.79, and around the country, $3.17. And uh, gas prices have been something we've shown off and on throughout the last few days, uh, typically because a lot of people were looking to the roads as an alternative means of travel due to the mess with Southwest, Southwest Airlines. But we also know renting cars was also a pretty big, uh, difficult task. But uh, we'll keep a close eye on things throughout the morning. We know it could be another busy uh, commute for drivers. And we're thinking things will be back to normal by Tuesday. Uh, I I think a lot so. of folks are off Monday. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's the official since the holidays on Sunday. A lot right. of folks right. back Monday to work, off. back to school, back to school. all that school. stuff. Yep. Yes, indeed. And going to be a warm start, warm finish to, to 2022, warm start to 2023. And love this picture. Yep, look at those. Got some just puffy cumulus clouds there. And then all of a sudden there is an angel in the clouds right above that. Great Aww. picture. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect shot. All right, lots of clouds hanging around here. Kind of a uh, murky look. And as you can see, somebody is flying off to uh, destinations unknown. And hope you have a good trip. We've got some showers out there to the, uh, the west. And that's where the majority of the rain is going to be throughout the rest of today. A little disturbance out there. Plenty of rain over in northern Mexico. And then... A little bit closer in, we've got some of these showers on the west side, but notice how they fizzled out. I mean, there was a fairly decent amount there just about, uh, say, half an hour, 45 minutes ago. Still have a few of these light little sprinkly showers sort of scattered about the area. And then there's also some drizzle, which is too light to be picked up on radar. Randolph has been reporting drizzle and is still reporting drizzle at the top of the hour. Then go off into the hill country and got a couple of light little sprinkly showers out there as well. So again, this is not any big deal. This computer model has a few of those those light showers kind of hanging around here throughout the morning hours. I think this kind of kind of overdoes things as far as it's showing where the coverage may be, but it's not going to be raining constantly nor everywhere. It's just going to be very light, very scattered. Um, some of those yellow areas, darker green, yellow areas. So which means a couple of decent downpours here and there. That'll be the situation through late afternoon out in western portions of the hill country and even a couple of sprinkles in and around here. But by dinner time, this has everything pretty much clearing on out of here. We will have clear skies overnight. That sets us up for a really good looking weekend around here. The humidity, which is low right now, is going to stay low tomorrow. It's going to try and come back in here on Sunday into Monday. Then we get another front moving on through, but that front's not going to be overly potent as far as temperatures you see will still be in the mid to upper 70s on Monday, even Tuesday, Wednesday. Then we get a bit more of a potent front, nothing like last week, but that'll at least knock us down to normal readings for high temperatures by the end of the week. Low temperatures stay very mild, especially Monday morning, we're going to be staying well up into the uh, the low 60s around here, even above the normal high temperature. And then again, by the uh, mid to latter part of the week, we'll finally be back down to normal readings as far as low temperatures are concerned. And rain chances, uh, a couple of, you know, other than today, Monday chance for some rain. That's pretty much going to be about it. Nothing uh, spectacular as far as rain to start off the new year. 67 degrees today at noon, a shower or two, and then a few of them later on this afternoon. The majority of the rain is going to be out to the west. And again, it's not going to be a big deal. A couple of decent showers here and there. Tomorrow, we start off at 47 degrees, get up to 74. Plenty of sunshine around here over the weekend. 78 on Monday, few showers, even a thunderstorm on uh, Monday when that front moves on through here. And then we'll have another front that comes through late Wednesday into Thursday. That's going to trim temperatures back down to normal readings. But until then, stays on the warm side. Yes, and dry because Monday, even though there's a chance, it's not a big downpour or anything. No, uh, a couple of thunderstorms, you know, so you could have a downpour, but it's not going to be a huge rain event coming gotcha. in here. So. Okay, thank you, Mike. Thank mm -hmm. you, sir. 649, 55 degrees. Looking ahead, a nonprofit that believes in second chances is helping former inmates find employment while feeding people in need at the same time. That is tomorrow on GMSA. Outside with Live Cam, we thank you for watching GMSA throughout the year. We hope that continues in 2023. We'll be right back.
Good morning. Coming up on GMA, passengers are still stranded across the country. Part of that Southwest travel debacle, the demand for compensation and answers growing. We put the tough questions to the Southwest Airlines CEO, Bob Jordan, in his first TV interview this morning. And with less than 24 hours left in 2022, how to start the new year right from your wallet to your kitchen and what to binge this New Year's Eve weekend. It's all coming up right here on GMA. And right now on KSET.com, we are almost done with the holidays, but that doesn't mean the fun has to stop. So we have some things that are going on in town and the surrounding areas throughout January, plus a list of events going on tomorrow night for New Year's Eve. That's all online right now at KSET.com. And in case you missed it, the KSET Storyteller Special is up right now on KSET.com. You can watch what stories our talented photojournalists remember most in 2022 as they take you behind the scenes of what goes on into covering those stories you see right here on KSET. I recorded it last night. I'll watch it later. Yeah. Coming up today on GMSA at 9 as we look forward to a new year and a fresh start. It's a good time to check up on your health. We'll explain what to, to put on your end of year health checklist. Plus, we're also looking back at some of the popular viral stories and trends in 2022. All that and more today on GMSA at 9. 654. All right, let's get one last look here at traffic 35 at LF, FM 1103. Still a problem uh, right now. We are seeing that first responders are working to clear up a spill that was reported a little bit earlier around six. Uh, we are still seeing a lot more traffic out there as well. Keep in mind, though, if you're traveling down I-35 southbound, FM 2252 will be closed at this time as first responders are working to clear up that mess. Now, the good news is, although 35 is a busy corridor, we're really not seeing a whole lot of slowdown and we bring it back here into town and it's pretty much the same story. You you can see a lot of green out there and I was just checking the corner of my eye at a lot of these trans guide cameras. You can see that really as we get you back on rotation that it's just going to be pretty quiet uh, right now with gas prices. We'll get you updated on that a little bit later, but this is probably going to be the main problem at least at this hour guys. And we got a couple of little sprinkles around the area as of right now. Very uh, kind of murky looking out there. Just some light, light rain and some mist and drizzle as well. This is all continuing uh, to kind of work its way off to the north. There's been a little bit of drizzle being reported around Randolph as well. You can see some up there in portions of Kendall County and then more out to the west. And that's where the majority is going to be throughout the rest of today. 54 in town, mid 40s hill country. And we're going to make it up to 67 today at noon and then 70 for a high temperature couple of showers here and there primarily out to the west then we're going to start to clear out tonight great looking weekend albeit on the warm side will be anywhere from say 10 15 or more degrees above normal 78 on new year's day plenty of sunshine around here a couple of showers on monday and then another front by wednesday thursday and that'll at least knock temperatures back down you know you're talking about the first of the year just think what is it one month from tomorrow is the cattle drive? Oh, yes, wow. Already. Okay. Approximately one month on the 1st of February. Yeah, it's so we're already back into that now. So, yeah. Do you have your wardrobe ready for uh, that month? Spot, yeah, just, yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> but, you know, you think about it. 1st of September, the end of the year goes by, and now all yes. of a sudden, I mean, it's going to be, what, Fiesta before we get turned around? Yeah, hit the uh, reset you, button. You're right. Jump, jump mm -hmm. right into that. Spring break first. That's right. <laughs> That's true. Hey, Happy New Year from yeah. the GMSA family. Happy New Year. We'll see you guys at 9.